We made an uh, Atlantic crossing from the uh, Canaries to St. Lucia in uh, November 2019. And we discovered, while we were in the Canaries, we discovered the Watton Sea uh, hydro generator. We thought it was a great piece of gear. And we know this will be very valuable for any cruising boat. Back in the old days, the first crossing we did in 1995, I always knew the value of a water generator um, simply because it's constantly generating power day and night. And so what I found in those days was a, made by Hamilton Ferris was a motor with a long line and a propeller. And so we mounted it on the, on the stern of our boat and we would drag this propeller and that would spin and it would turn the rope and they would turn the motor and gave us good power. But it was, uh, I spent probably a week of the crossing untangling our fishing line from it, trying to retrieve it. Uh, you know, it was just, it was so unmanageable. It was effective but unmanageable from an operational standpoint. So versus the old days with the old ropes and, uh, and propellers, we now have a really good system, which is the Watton C, which is a blade with the unit built into it. It's completely manageable, easy to lift, easy to deploy, and of course technology has moved on, so it's far more effective. So we, we added uh, the Watton C to the stern of the boat in the Canaries before we left on this trip. And uh, Dion, fortunately, is a very experienced engineer in this sort of stuff, so he uh, headed up uh, installing it. So how long did it take, Dion? I would say for just a single person, it's a, it's a day job. Um, getting your converter installed, connected to the battery bank, and then installing the mounting brackets for the Watt and C. Now, that can become more complicated. However, we were very fortunate on this boat that we had a a flat transom and we could mount the water sea mounting brackets directly onto the transom uh, and when the giraffe just popped it in. Right. We also opted to put a plug and socket going through meaning we can unplug it and actually stow it away when yeah. needed. So Spark is completely removable if we don't want to leave him out in the elements uh, which is a nice feature but installation is very simple uh, if you have if you have some knowledge about electrical etc um, and you're handy it's very very easy to install and in my opinion very worthwhile having and then Steve I believe you opted to go for the the smaller version the 300 watt versus the 600 just because it balanced out within your power sources yeah you know we weren't we, we, we weren't too sure what we what whether we wanted to have a big one but we figured that we wanted multiple energy sources so that our solution covered multiple things you know we have 125 amp alternators on each engine we have a generator with a three with a three kilowatt about a hundred a hundred amp battery charger we have eight solar panels up there and we have sparky our what and see so we have four Four, four sources of energy to charge our batteries. Um, what's our power draw in a day here on this boat? It's quite a, a, a power hungry boat as well, about 35? It's about 30, uh, 30 to 35 amps. Right. Uh, that covers our refrigeration. We've got a full size fridge freezer. Right. We've got a small refrigerator. And our then, beer fridge upstairs, very important. And then all the sailing instruments. Plus, of course, we have to boil water. Uh, if we want to use our panini, we have to run our generator. So we, we're a very power hungry boat and we figured that we would just be power hungry and meet the demand. So that's why we have our Watt and C, which has now been, it's, it's our, actually our best crew member, our best unpaid crew member. His name is Sparky now. He, we like to give everything a name. So Sparky's giving us about 350 amps a day, right? That's on the, on, on the low end, yes. On the low end. Depending on our speed, the model we selected uh, has got three propellers and uh, right. we went for the mid-size and the uh, higher the speed, the more power we get up out of it. Right, and we've got then, of course, we've got our solar panels and our solar panels are giving us probably 20 mm -hmm. uh, times 8, so about probably 200 amps a day. So we're getting about 500 conservatively out of our solar and our Watt and Sea water generator. Of course, we have to run our generator every day to make water. Uh, the crew don't like to shower in cold water, so we have to make hot water for them, etc. So between the three systems, we are more than more than keeping up with the power needs or the power demands on the boat. What are we at now, Leon? Have you? Yeah, so we at the moment we we positive for about eight amps um, with a solar. I mean, we've got about maybe some shade areas, but we. 
so in the day times we sit we sit positive and then um, at night times as soon right. as we lose solar we right. start to go down so actually what's happening is right now with all of our draw between our solar and sparky i want to see um, we are actually charging the batteries because we have surplus power at night it halves because our solar panels go dark so it's really all about managing your your power sources when we have uh, under cell like we are at the moment the hydro generator is our primary source um, if we're motoring the primary source is going to be from the alternators and right. then when we at anchor the primary source is going to be from the solar power right. and then we just supplement it with the generator and keeping the generator at runtime as low as possible by optimizing our video sources right we probably reduced our generator runtime by at least 40 percent of what we would need if we didn't have sparky working for free on the back there so that's it's, it's really been a good a good addition to our uh, our energy plan and uh, you know i would re highly recommend a, a, multi, a, a multiple input uh, solution versus a one unit input solution and then to effectively manage between those sources a bluetooth enabled power management system or battery management system as we have on this boat. This allows us to determine how much power is coming in from the various sources. It also highlights the power draw. So when the galley gets busy, um, they can, and we on the inverter, it can draw 100 amps for boiling the kettle, running the panini, the crock pot. Uh, so what we've found on this boat, whenever the galley is busy, we just fire up the generator um, and draw AC from the generator instead of depleting our power bank. Uh, so once again, managing the right. resources. And, and, and while we're doing that, we've got our water, ma water maker working and we've got our reheating water, etc. And uh, so, so essentially we're doing, multiple so we're doing multiple functions when we run our generator. We're not just running it to, to boil water. And Steve, I think we're down to about two hours now, less than an hour in the morning and then less than an hour in the evening. Yeah, we're doing pretty well right now, but of course, you know, it's, 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 it's just a matter of how much sun we get during the day. The Watton C uh, hydro generator was definitely one of our most valuable pieces of equipment on board while we were crossing the Atlantic. If you're interested, go to wattonsea.com and ask for Matthew.